When you're heading back to Australia, what will be your, your ab abiding impressions of Ireland from a farming point of view? So I think the future for farming is absolutely brilliant. I think it's really inspiring and it's exciting. And people are, there's several sides to that. One is that people are getting back to basics. They're getting back in touch with it, like digging a hole, looking at the soil, smelling the soil, looking at earthworms, looking at plant roots, looking to see how deep are the roots getting. And all those kinds of things are really, really important things to do because it does reconnect you with mm -hmm. the soil. And then thinking more broadly about everything else that's living on the soil when you have multi-species uh, crops and pastures, for example, just the diversity that you get in terms of insects um, and birds, but also the fact that you feel better as a person when you go out into that environment. So your personal wellness factor or happiness factor or whatever it is, you know, that, that goes up, uh, which is going to be great for all the people that you're associated with, your family, your friends. Everyone benefits, like a rising tide floats all boats. I just think there are so many benefits to these kinds of changes that, wow, well, can only go, you know, if from here, I think we're still, we've, we, the curve has started to move up. We've moved off that flat bit and, you know, there's an exponential increase in interest in these things. In a few years' time, even, it's going to be even more exciting and um, more advanced than what it is now. We're just getting to that point where it's just about to explode and um, there's going to be so much information coming out and I think the farmer groups and the networks are going to be even more important um, for people just to be able to share that information. So there's two sides to that. One is farmers talking to farmers, farmers meeting each other on, on farms and having like real discussions, but then also using like a, the digital age like the internet and um, WhatsApp groups and those kinds of things to actually share that information. I want to go to you, Will, um, in the sense that uh, I've been quite taken by the kind of uh, the sense that a lot of people in the room here feel like they're on a journey of, you know, whether they're uh, from convert conventional farming into no-till or from uh, conventional or no-till into organic or from organic into something else. Is there the same kind of buzz, the same kind of vibe uh, going on in the UK? I think, I think it is growing. Um, you know, there are obviously challenges, um, and the challenges are the margins on farm all the time. Um, but these guys, you know, the conventional arable boys that are using cover crops, they're seeing the benefits of those, um, and they are pulling the inputs out. And so they're seeing a financial gain to that now. Um, in terms of the dairy sector, no, they're, I would say they're fairly blinkered in, in what they're doing at this moment in time. Um, when you we say have, they, is, is, that, is that organic dairy farmers? No, or? I would say that's, that's conventional dairy farmers. Um, they are still fairly blinkered to what's going on around them, but we have more, far more diverse systems. So there is the New Zealand system there in the UK, but then there are very high systems as well. Um, but no, in terms of biological farming, it tends to be the arable, the arable guys, the conventional arable, arable guys who are really starting to look at it and embrace it. You could actually say that the livestock farmers have an advantage over them already because they're working with um, the herbivores. So there is that synergy between the herbivores and, and their soils already. So their soils are probably in better heart. So the conventional arable boys, they're coming from a lower base at this moment in time, I guess. Andy, you've been talking to plenty of Irish fellas over the last uh, 48 hours. Uh, is there anything you're going back to the UK thinking, mm, that sounds interesting, or maybe it'd be more like, jeekers, thank God I'm not dealing with that. Uh, but it, it's, it's hard to come away from something like this without uh, learning something new. I find in the UK there's a massive divergence. It's a bit like the politics in the UK. There's the, the is it a polarisation? There's, one, there's is it is like a polarisation. There's the people extremes? like myself doing the biological thing, trying to reduce inputs, and then there's the others who are trying to push, push, push. We need to feed the world. We need to double production. We need 15 tonne of wheat, et cetera, et cetera. Put as much on, and it'll pay for itself. So I, there's not much of a middle ground, but that's the way I see agriculture going at home at the moment. But my point would be probably that the regulation is going to stop that in five years' time. 
Um, so I, for me, there's no point going down that way because you're not going to be able to do it in five years' time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you're just trying to get ahead of the curve. Trying to, because when they put a cap of nitrogen cap or a fertilizer cap, and then you've been putting three, four hundred kilograms of nitrogen on, and you suddenly have to go down to a hundred, yeah. your soil's not going to be ready for that. It's yeah. gonna, it's gonna collapse. So, for me, you've got to get ahead of the curve. Okay, Jim, I'll turn to you next. I mean, uh, you've been involved in this um, sector, if I can call it that, for for many years. Uh, are you seeing much of a change in terms of the 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 type of farmers that are suddenly starting to turn up at these events or the the level of engagement? I, I am. Um, so I'm engaged division teaching as well as you know. And what I'm, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing an amazing amount of people that are very, very skilled in other areas that are landless and they want to become farmers. It's quite an interesting phenomenon. And they don't, they don't have the hang-ups of, oh, we're not making money, we can't do it, or any of those obstacles, or what will my father think? They just go for it. And they're, very, they're a very interesting group of people, and they have incredible skills. And some of them are quite scientific, IT, that type of stuff. And they really have it at a certain level and then they need to get it at a level that we have it as farmers, which is intuitively. Yeah. So it's a, very, it's a journey for them. And then we need to get a bit of their enthusiasm in passion and also their ability of, you can climb the mountain. Yeah. You know, their gung-ho attitude. Yeah. So that's uh, a great change. Andrew, if, uh, I'll bring you in here. I mean, you may not have envisage seeing yourself seated um, at a biological conference uh, two or three years ago, did you? No, no, it definitely wasn't part of the plan. Yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm a whole lot happier here than I was, I, I, to be honest, I was at a stage I was getting kind of jaded, yeah. you know, doing the same thing year in, year out. Yeah. Um, you get tired of it, whereas this is constantly challenging and exciting. And was there a light bulb moment? Like, was it, was it somebody said something to you or you woke up one morning and decided to go to a, a, an event or...? No, I'd say the light bulb, Daryl, was probably actually uh, a, a strip till coming into a... strip, strip till drill coming into a field and putting in a crop and I just thought, this can't be this easy. Yeah. And, yeah, obviously it's not quite that easy, but sure. it's a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And that was... The, yeah, that, that, that started the ball rolling. Yeah. Because it kind of defied all your conventional farming beliefs almost, did it? Well, exactly, and it showed, and, and the, the, the guy said, no, we'll sow this a couple of weeks later, we need the soil to warm up, and I thought, okay, this is one field, I'm going to give him his, his room. It was a really difficult spring that we did it. Yeah. This guy's getting one chance with one field. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, I wasn't trying to prove him wrong, you know. The yeah. idea was to just to suck it and see, and, mm. and an awful lot of suck it and see has been going on. I mean, with, with the likes of Danny, we're hoping that there'll be less suck it and see and a little bit more, a little bit more direction, because... I think there's a lot of people in the same position who just haven't had that light bulb moment and if we can make it easier for them then a lot more people are going to do what we're doing. You know, there's, there's some of us are more adventurous than others and some of us are eco-warriors and we're going to do it regardless and, and there's other people who will never do it. Yeah. But there's probably a big floating voter in the middle, yeah. you know, a big group of them who if you make it a bit handier they will do it and I think, yeah. you know, I think everybody's going to benefit from I that. Mean, uh, our, uh, is there any danger of our farm organisations getting involved in this? When I talk about farm organisations, uh, dare I mention uh, the IFA, the ICMSA, like, I mean, they're supposed to be grassroots organisations, aren't they? Well, we have to be very wary of that kind of thing. <laughs> They, yeah, they, they look at the, the, they, they, they will. I mean, I think their their role in, in farming is, is 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 changing fairly radically anyway. And you know, the the, the guy's presentation from base was you know was, was very powerful there because yeah. that's that, that's almost a spontaneous collective of people yeah. who who can achieve an awful lot and and through you know communications now make things possible in in ways that no one could have foreseen. I, yeah, I, I think farming uh, farming organisations have to have to adapt to that, uh, but I'm, I'm not quite sure how it's going to 
yeah. how it's going to happen. And I've, I, in my earlier years, I would have spent a lot of time in IFA and done a lot of work, but it's, it's, it, it, it has changed and I've changed, and I'm, I'm not sure when the two are going to merge again, but it definitely will happen. Yeah. Thomas, I, I'm not going to give the final, final word to you, but... Uh, <laughs> Lord, no. Because I, I know y y you'd make the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Darrell, we're not finished in that count as hard yet. <laughs> um, he hedgehogs aside, um, do, do you, like, are your neighbours, do you find your neighbours are sticking their heads over the ditch more now and asking more questions of you, or are you considered a bit of a rare species down there? Um, there's two guys down the road and they're betting with each other every year that uh, the crops definitely won't grow this year. Yeah. And it's a double circuit at one stage. And um, one of the lads said to me the other day, he says, the crops better fail next year because I'm going to owe him 100 euros at this stage. <laughs> but um, they're skeptical, okay? They can see it working. And, and, and they will give me the praise that it is working. And they will, a lot, of, a lot of them have walked through the farm on the QT. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, to be fair, it's, they took the effort to do it, okay, but it's that leap of faith. It's that farmers have got so used to quantifying everything, and it's the direction we're going in, they're the stats, piece of paper. It's, it's the biological side of things that it's a slow burner for them. But I, I actually think there was never a better time in Irish agriculture for things to change. Because I, I had said to one of the guys one day, I'm actually, I might be organic, but I'm actually a carbon farmer. I farm carbon. And I use the, car the microbiology to break down the carbon to give me a cash crop and back again. So I temporarily sequester carbon. So I'm a carbon farmer. And I finally say uh, well done to everyone for being, taking the time out here, for investing in yourselves, investing in your businesses. It's so, so important uh, that you continue to learn, to continue to reinvigorate yourselves and continue to engage with other people who are as passionate about this as we are. So well done to everybody here and thanks so much for your time.